Good morning, friends and fellow traders. This is Doug Campbell with Right Way Options, and this is the Morning Market Prep video for Tuesday, January 11th, 2022. Well, my goodness, yesterday was pretty wild and rambunctious, wasn't it? With a huge sell off and then a complete recovery. Well, not, I wouldn't say complete, but a major recovery on the day that's probably inspiring a whole bunch of buy the dip buyers to rush in on risk. Now, be careful here as we approach resistance levels in these charts. And let's take a look at that and see what this means today for the Tuesday edition of the Morning Market Prep video. Good morning once again, everyone, and thanks so much for being here. Once again, I'll apologize for the weakness of my voice. It's getting a little bit better, but hopefully you'll bear with me here. If we take a look at these charts on the indexes, got a little bit of resistance levels above, but this was a major recovery yesterday, yesterday leaving a hammer pattern behind in the chart. Now keep in mind, a hammer is one of those bullish signals that candlestick um, um, patterns always talk about. That's the bullish signal to rush in on. But please keep in mind with resistance so close above, that hammer pattern doesn't really mean anything unless it actually follows through to the upside. So if we're unable to follow through to the upside, just keep in mind we markets move in three directions. So we could pop right back up here and then move sideways into that trend. If we can find that bullish reason to push on higher, push on up here, then we need to get out of this resistance and hold it as support before we can really say the all clear has been sounded. And let's also keep in mind, we could certainly, and we can kind of see a little bit of that in the pre-market action here on this pump up that we're catching here this morning, that we could pop right into this resistance area and that's where we could find bears. So watch that carefully today and remember that if we get involved in the emotional trading that big swings like this can create we can make a lot of mistakes in our trading let's keep in mind that markets not only test lows but oftentimes retest those lows before the all clear is sounded so you'll want to keep that in mind and just realize that if you rush in too too soon you might get caught in the next wave of pullback now i'm not suggesting that's going to occur i'm just saying make sure you plan your risk carefully on um, these charts because there is a lot of emotion in this market right now that big swing yesterday certainly displayed that completely and um, if you rush too quickly it could be damaging to your account let's take a look at the spy spy now spy has multiple resistance levels above that we need to be um, thinking about we came down in here and we came really close to testing this price support i had this marked for members of right way options yesterday as a possible move down into there but we reversed just before that right right in here there's a little teeny tiny level of price support and we reversed just right off of that and as you can see coming back up we breached this level of price resistance we have a another price resistance above that and then the bigger one above that we're going to have to deal with on that move back up and please keep in mind we still have that 50-day moving average that's challenging us here we're trying to poke through that this morning on the spy but watch that closely that is exactly where the bears could show up so remember one of the things we want to do when we buy stocks we buy indexes we want to buy them at or near price support levels not at or near price resistance levels that can be the place where things reverse so watch that very carefully here today i'm not saying that you can't buy do follow your plan but i'm saying be really really careful um, as we approach these resistance levels in case we happen to whipsaw the other way um, sometime today, tomorrow, or remember, we've got um, inflationary data coming this week. We've got a lot of things going on that could cause a lot of volatility. So um, don't get caught up in the hype. Stay focused on your trading plan here. And then let's take a look at the Qs, the QQQ. 
this has got the biggest job to do overall. And notice I marked this level right in here for RWO folks yesterday. And I think a lot of folks were thinking there's no way we could go that far, but we ended up tagging that almost perfectly. We dipped through it just a tiny little bit and I marked out this area if we because if we failed here we might move all the way down into there. So take a look right here. We've moved back up but boy we have got a lot of work to do here on the NASDAQ and one thing that's helping that today is our bonds are pulling back um, or our excuse me our treasury yields are pulling back just a little bit this morning. So that's going to help out just a tiny little bit but let's keep in mind they're talking about four interest rate increases now next year that typically slows the market down and that could be damaging for tech sector so watch that carefully as we approach these resistance levels keep in mind as we move up we have that 50-day moving average up here that has started to flatten out and notice our shorter term averages have crossed down through that so we've got some work to do there's some questions to be answered here and I think yesterday really raised more questions than it did answers. And it, what's interesting is if you look at the financial media right now, it's like a non-stop wave of hype and prediction that the market has to go higher, that the market has mispriced this move. And maybe that is true, but be really, really careful when all the institutions are singing in chorus, all of them pumping one direction. That makes me very, very nervous. So watch that closely here in the market. I think they're really trying to inspire a buy the dip rally to get things pushed back up. But boy, be careful as we approach those resistance levels in case they decide to whip it the other direction as well. A lot of folks have been punished here with this volatility and don't continue to fall for that. Stay focused to price action, stay focused to your rules, and you can win in a market like this as we did yesterday in Runway Options. We really made some money um, in our group here because we were prepared for this potential sell-off. So kind of keep that in mind, guys. Um, watch this pretty closely. Let's take a look at our IWM. Now our Russell yesterday pushed down here toward this level of price support and so far holding in there on that price support. But I got to tell you, there really is nothing about this chart that's bullish yet. We have to take a look at all of this resistance that we have here in the price action of the chart and notice that we're below our 50 day, we're below our 200 day. And it really wouldn't take a whole lot of effort to see that that 50 day could turn below that 200 day here pretty quickly. So watch that closely. Now we've had an amazing market that has the ability to just ignore and ignore and ignore um, um, events out there in the market and perhaps we do that again. But I want to just point out this extreme volatility that we've seen. If you've been suffering in this market, if you've been seeing that your account and all of this going on, your account has been shrinking rather than growing, then this volatility is causing you a lot of problems. And chasing harder or pushing harder in a market like that can only increase that damage. So back up a little bit get a little bit more focused in on the price action, and then reemerge into the market with a better focused plan rather than always being caught up in these emotional swings back and forth in the market. I hope that's helpful. And I know I've been getting a lot of emails about folks that have been, their accounts are being destroyed right now in this volatility. So be very, very careful here in a market that swings this many points can create an awful lot of damage in a retail trader's account. Let's take a look at our VIX. Now our VIX yesterday, what a big swing in VIX. We shot up strongly. We were up there above that 20 handle and I've been mentioning that 20 handle for some time. If we get up here and hold above this area, that could be problematic for us. That is a big level throughout this chart and boy, it goes back a long, long ways. But we pushed up through there and then gave it all back up as if as if all of that whipsaw in the market created no fear at all. Now, 
you tell me that that didn't create fear in traders because a lot of folks lost a lot of money yesterday in the market. So that did change the aspect of the market here a little bit that I don't think this is representative of the true um, uncertainty that this market is, is experiencing right now. But that being said, this is bullish for the market. Um, that big push up and pull back and hold below because that's creating this lower high here again in the VIX. As long as you were on the right side of this yesterday, you cleaned up and did a great, um, had a great day in the market. But if you were on the wrong side of this, this is pretty punishing. If we can continue to push down in this, that would be bullish for the market if that fear continues to drop. But it, we could also hold in here and bounce right back up. So just be really, really careful as we approach those resistance levels in the market. Then if we take a look at our T2122, our T2122 is kind of interesting in the fact that we were pushed down here um, yesterday we came all the way down here we were right about there we were very very close to reaching that bullish reversal zone and that big whipsaw yesterday brought us right back up in here so what does that mean well remember t2122 doesn't tell us the direction of the market it just tells us that you know the risks or the open spaces available that we could move into so what this means is we've created that big potential here if those bears were to re-engage we've opened up a big downside move potential because of that whipsaw in the market we also if those bulls can engage we've in, engaged a nice upside opportunity if they can push on through those resistance levels so kind of keep that in mind what we did in that big whipsaw is really left more questions than answers and probably added tremendous risk to the retail traders account because of the huge whip that this market could potentially deliver to us. So be kind of careful here. T2122 doesn't tell us the direction of the market, just tells us those possible moves that are out there and available to us. So watch carefully here. Now let's take a look at our T2108. T2108 was damaged yesterday with some selling. It pulled back pretty substantially. Honestly, we have 41% of our stocks holding above the 40-day moving average. And let's keep in mind just how close we are to record highs um, in, in this market. And we continue to have fewer and fewer stocks participating in that move to the upside. Now, that being said, pushing up through this resistance level, if we can hold in here and bounce back up, this would start to show us a strengthening of that, the, that underlying um, problem that we've seen in the market of weakness. If we can start pushing these back up, that would be a bullish case for the market. So keep a close eye on this. If we can get more and more of those stocks participating to the upside, then who knows? We might be able to push right on through, but watch that carefully. T2107 is really suggesting the same thing, in my opinion. We pushed up into this downtrend here in T2107. This is the percentage of stocks above the 200-day moving average. We've only got about 40% of our stocks above the 200-day. But there is some good news in this chart. Even though we have failed this trend to the downside, let's notice there is some price support here in this chart that we got above and we're holding above that. So if we can push back off of this level, then we have that opportunity that we could push on up and break that downtrend and hold. So let's watch that carefully and closely here. Um, if we can start to pull some of these stocks up out of the bottom, then that certainly could be a bullish case for the market. However, if those bears were to re-engage and come back into play and push us back down below that level right in there, and start becoming a little bit more concerned that the bears may gain some advantage here. So watch carefully and closely. And then I have to tell you, T2101 was a little bit odd for me yesterday. T2101 
you would typically see rally on a big bearish day, but we had enough bullishness in the market that we didn't actually see that. So notice that we've we've pushed this back down into this area. Notice we broke this price support right in here. I've been talking about that. We broke this downtrend here in this chart. So we are back in that area, in that area where we ran the, the, the big rally in the market to the upside. We're back in this area where we could be back in here rebuilding this wedging pattern, which would suggest potentially more upside in the market could be coming. That said, however, with that big whipsaw, if we were to get a big selling wave, we could push right back above that. So watch carefully here. We have a lot of questions here to be answered. And that's what I was saying yesterday, at, just really raised more questions than answers in some of these market internals and really shows us the, the risk in this market. So be really careful how you engage the market. Maybe if you want to trade, make sure you engage it with smaller than normal positions. Make sure you're um, planning those positions carefully um, so that you're protecting yourself as much as possible. And remember, when we get big moves like this, remember to take profits. That's what we did yesterday in right-way options and that sell-off. It was just closing trades, closing trades, closing trades, picking up that capital. So watch this very, very carefully. Then let's take a look at our economic calendar for today. Our economic calendar actually is a pretty light day. We've got um, one Fed speaker in here talking um, um, this morning, and then we've got Jerome Powell that will be testifying in the Senate um, on his confirmation um, of the Fed chairmanship. So you'll want to keep an eye on that. Um, he's going to be probably giving some details on how he wants to navigate this mark, um, this uh, situation that they're dealing with, with all of their debt and um, um, interest rate increases. So you might keep an eye on that. Remember, every time Jerome Powell talks, the market can react pretty substantially. So that'll be at 10 a.m. today. Um, we've got a couple of bond um, actions in here, but I don't know that that will be all that impressive or move the market much. But what I would want to point out is as you're planning forward for tomorrow, boy, keep in mind that CPI number could be critical for us tomorrow and certainly has the potential to move the market in either direction, up or down. Consensus on this in the Econoday consensus is suggesting a substantial decline in that CPI, um, which would be, um, well, pretty remarkable, honestly. Um, but we'll want to watch that closely. If they are right and we get a decline in that inflationary rate, that could be very bullish for the market. Market. So watch that closely. And then we've got that um, petroleum status. Now this might be interesting to keep an eye on as well tomorrow because we know that OPEC is increasing their pumping and we'll want to watch that carefully if um, our supplies suddenly begin to rise. That could have a negative effect on that oil sector. So watch that close as well. Then let's take a look at our uh, <coughs> earnings calendar. Now our earnings calendar today is pretty darn light. We have nine, nine 10 companies on the list, but only four companies verified for today. And a couple of those are very, very small cap and really not notable. So the two today that I've pulled out, um, ACI will be reporting this morning. It looks like it is already reporting, getting a pretty negative reaction here um, on that chart. Let's keep a close eye on this. This has that kind of a look of a bit of a head and shoulders type pattern formed up here. That could be very negative here on Albertson, so keep an eye on that. And the only other real significant report today, um, SNX, or somewhat significant, we'll want to keep an eye on this. And it looks like they're moving positively on their um, 
on their action here this morning. So watch that. We've got a little tiny uptrend in here in this chart. We're breaking above some resistance in here. That might be an interesting one to keep a close eye on, SNX. So with that, everyone, how about we take a look at some stocks that could be setting up for today? But before we do that, if you could do me a quick favor, if this is the first time you've seen these videos, if you could please click that subscribe button on YouTube and also click that bell icon when it pops up so that you'll be notified every time I post one of these videos. And if you find these videos to be useful, if you could please click those thumbs up buttons, leave those brief comments, that would be very, very helpful continuing to grow the channel. And I just want to say thank you also to those folks that are supporting the channel through Buy Me a Coffee. I truly, truly appreciate it. You guys are awesome. Never would have guessed there had been this much um, support for this kind of content. Um, I truly appreciate it. Let's take a look at some of these stocks setting up. As you guys remember, I had talked about Merck um, as a potential trade um, last week. And you can see it was right in here that I was suggesting that Merck may go. Watch this, how Merck has pushed up really, really hard. This is a nice little upside pattern that I look for in the market. We moved right up in here into this resistance zone. We pushed through yesterday with that really strong move to the upside but I'd watch this right in here. There is that possibility now that Merck will rest or pull back, consolidate, and let's keep in mind we have a range in here. So Merck's, Merck's move may be done for now, but we may also have just that little bit of extra surge right up into here. So watch that closely if you happen to be in that trade. Let's keep an eye on um, Philip Morris. Philip Morris has been unbelievably strong, and I think there may, may still be some upside here in Philip Morris. My original alert in that trade was right here, and you can see moving up very, very strongly here on this chart. Again, this is defensive sector stocks. We We've got a slew of institutions out there saying, oh, the market should be going a lot higher, should be going a lot higher. And yet we're seeing a massive rotation into these old, boring defensive sector stocks. So kind of keep that in mind. Keep uh, when we see defensive sector stocks um, showing this kind of strength, the only way they can show this kind of strength is institutional support. So keep that in mind as they continue to push up. Let's watch for those next entries into those trades for that upside move. Now, there's been an awful lot of talk out there um, about tech being really, really strong and should come back. And if that is the case, take a look at a stock like MU. MU looking pretty good in here. Notice it really didn't get heavily involved in the sell-off yesterday. Showing pretty, pretty strong here and may have that opportunity to push on out here and take off. So keep a close eye on MU. That's looking pretty darn good. Um, as you guys know, I've been um, talking about this VAL, VALE for a long time, and it took a while to get going here. Finally took off um, at the end of last week, breaking through, and we're still resting here a little bit. I think there may be another opportunity into this trade. This is a great move, breaking those downtrends, holding some resistance levels in, the, um, in that chart. So watch that carefully to the upside. How about a little, a little bit on the mining side? Um, let's take a look at FCX. FCX is setting up here for possible upside. Copper has been um, kind of an interesting chart. Well, last year was just really challenging chart, honestly, with the way it was whipping around. But notice we've broken through some pretty good resistance levels in the chart, and now we're resting right up in here. Keep a close eye on that. If that continues to pro progress out here toward this trend, and it could even go early, but watch that carefully in here. FCX might be showing some signs to the upside. And we know if EVs, if all of these electric vehicles are going to be produced we don't have near enough copper to do all of that and provide the electrical transmission lines around the world to charge them all copper has a story here that could be pretty substantial so keep a close eye on that because i'm running short on time today guys i'm going to call it an end here i want to wish you all a fantastic day i want to wish you great results in your trading thanks so much for being here i do appreciate it take care of yourself and we'll see you right back here bright and
and early Wednesday morning. Have a good one, everyone.